Okay, we're getting some people coming in. Hello, hello, hello. Good afternoon, everyone. Um, we're just going to give some time for people to trickle to the chat before we get started officially with the event. But thank you all so much for being here today. All right. Um, okay, we'll get started just with brief stuff versus the rundown of things. Um, so my name is Eddie Cabrera Jr. I am an admissions advisor here at Emory University. Um, I specifically work with the territories of Detroit, uh, Delaware, Minnesota, and uh, Pennsylvania. Um, I'm also a proud Emory alum, proud Afro-Latino alum, proud queer alum. So really awesome to see all you students here today. Thank y'all so much for coming out. Um, and just a little bit about the things that you're here for. So first of all, congratulations to all students here today. Uh, it must have been you must have been admitted to Emory University to be able to attend this. So round of applause. You did your thing. Um, you made it. So that's awesome. Congratulations on that. Um, so we really hope that this this panel gives you just some advice on just LGBTQ plus life at Emory University, how you fit into that, and just any questions you may have for that. Um, when it comes to how the rundown of things will be. We'll have our Q&A tab open. Um, Danielle Bruce Steele and my colleagues from the Office of LGBTQ Life at Emory will be um, providing you know, questions for the panelists to answer. These panelists are some awesome student leaders from across campus who have great experience with just understanding just how we fit into this campus dynamic. Um, and hopefully we get to learn a little bit something about our awesome Emory community here. Um, and just some housekeeping stuff for the technology side of things. Um, this will be recorded and uploaded to our YouTube channel at Emory University so that after it is finished recording, you'll be able to revisit it and watch it again um, for any accessibility. That should be uploaded within the next 72-ish hours. Um, and that is about it on my end. So, you know, nice about me for introducing, but I'd love to pass it off to Danielle and our awesome student panelists um, who will be just teaching you a little bit more about Emory University today. Hey everybody, uh, excited to have a panel this uh, this evening. Apologies in advance if you hear my four year old in the background, but he's getting ready to go to bed, so it could be quiet soon. Um, like I said, my name is Daniel Perfil. I'm a professor of her. I'm the director of the Office of LGBT Life, been in Emory for a hot minute, um, doing it in various capacities. And right now, I'm leading the Office of LGBT Life, which has just moved into the new identity space area and belonging to community justice over in Cox Hall. And so we have about a 1500 square foot, brand new, shiny, beautiful space um, over there where I see some, if not all of these students at various points during the day or week. And so we're excited to share um, from a student perspective, kind of what is Emory like and what their experiences have been and then kind of fill in any blanks about specific resources that folks might be looking for. So um, I'm gonna go in the order that I see folks on my screen. So Eleanor, would you like to go first? Just kind of introduce yourself. And once we do introductions, we'll jump into our first question. Hello, I'm Eleanor. I'm a junior in the College of Arts and Sciences. I'm studying women's gender and sexuality studies and anthropology. Some things I'm involved with on campus. I'm a fellow for the undergraduate office of admissions, so I help like run the ESA program with all the tour guides. I'm the editor in chief of Alloy Literary Magazine. I'm also the editor in chief of Lullwater Literary Magazine. I'm the editor of the uh, WMRE, which is the radio station here on campus. There's a scene, um, and I'm also the undergraduate representative for the Department of Women's Gender and Sexuality Studies. Thank you. Hi guys, my name is Diego. I'm a second year in the college, double majoring in environmental science and human health with a focus in epidemiology. And I'm from Gainesville, Georgia. It's kind of a small town. Not a lot of people have heard of it, but it's actually the chicken capital of the world. So 
if you've ever had chicken, now you know where it came from. And I do have a pet chicken. Her name is Regina. Um, but a little bit about my on-campus involvement. I'm a sophomore advisor in my residence hall. So I sort of serve as a peer mentor for first-year students to help ease their transition from high school into college. I'm a student ambassador for Emory, so I help lead a lot of campus tours and serve on cool panels like this for cool people who are interested in Emory. And I'm a laboratory assistant in the Prokopec lab where we do disease ecology and vector ecology. Hi, I'm Em. I'm a second year in the College of Arts and Sciences studying psychology and African-American studies. Um, I'm originally from Nigeria, but I also lived in Rochester, Minnesota for quite some time. Uh, and then my family lives in Jersey, so I feel like I've lived all over. Um, I'm involved in quite a lot on campus. I am also a tour guide um, in, with Emerson Ambassadors. Um, and I'm a research assistant in the Morality and Development Lab in the Psychology Department. And I'm uh, involved with SBC, which is our Student Programming Council. So that concert that we just had last week, that was us. Uh, shout out for Millie. <laughs> and I'm vice president of the Black Student Alliance on campus. So. Hey, y'all. My name is Advik. I'm a third year student in the College of Arts and Sciences. Um, I'm from Suwannee, Georgia, which isn't too far from Gainesville. Um, not really sure what it's the capital of, but um, I'm sure it's relevant for something. <laughs> um, I am going to be the president of Emory Pride next year, and I am a um, leader of the Queer Nation Community Group. And I'm also involved with residence life um, as a resident advisor. So if you have any questions about any of those, you can you can definitely reach out to me. Great, thank you all. Um, to start off, as current students, if you could tell us a little bit about why you chose to enroll in Emory. And I know that many of you have not all of you had a lot of different um, choices, and so why Emory? I can go first. Um, so I, when I applied to college, it was the timing of COVID meant that I couldn't tour any campuses. So I kind of was just doing research online. I knew that I wanted to, I'm originally from Toledo, Ohio. I wanted to go somewhere that wasn't Midwestern, not because I hate the Midwest. I love the Midwest, um, but I just wanted to live somewhere different. So the South was really appealing to me because of that. I wanted to be near somewhere that had a city that had a lot of like fun stuff going on because I wanted to be able to experience that. But it was also important to me that where I ended up also felt like a college campus. I didn't want it to just be like a school in a city and there wasn't a lot of campus. As you can see in Eddie's background, we have a really beautiful campus um, that really does feel like a college campus. Um, but I did get to visit Emory like right before uh, the decision date and I wanted to make sure that I didn't hate it before I committed. And I was so struck at how kind everybody was. They only had first year students on campus because of COVID regulations, but I was walking around with my parents and I was like, oh, I look so nerdy, like this is so embarrassing. Um, but students were coming up to me and introducing themselves to me and offering me their email or their phone number or just to chat about Emory and saying like, we love it here. We really encourage you to come here. And I thought like this community is, is wonderful and so kind. So I ended up committing the night that I visited. And so why my Emory story is a little bit long, so I'll try to keep it short, but I actually had the opportunity to visit campus a long time ago when I was in fifth grade, and my family and I walked around the Carlos Museum, and we got really lucky because it happened to be the first day of orientation for all the incoming first year students. So we saw them in their white Emory t-shirts, they were on the quad taking their class photo, and we ended up getting like these King of Pops popsicles, and we were just walking around the quad. And I just have like this vivid flashback of thinking about how diverse the student body was. It was not only like racially and culturally diverse, but from the conversations I overheard, I could tell that it was socioeconomically diverse and diverse in the different interests and different social, social and academic disciplines. And I think that's really what drew me here was just like the level of academics, especially in public health. I knew that I wanted to do epidemiology and work with different types of diseases and having the resources like Rollins School of Public Health and the CDC right on our campus were just so instrumental for my career paths. So Emory really just stuck out to me and I applied early decision. I was also technically early decision. I applied through Crestbridge. Um, so I applied, I was like accepted way early. But I guess the reason I um like ranked uh, Emory on my Crestbridge list was 
I wanted to be out of the Midwest. I did not like the Midwest, actually. So I did not apply to any schools in the Midwest. I wanted to be far, far away from it. Um, and Emory was actually the only school I applied to in the South. But I was really drawn to it because uh, it had a, really, a huge focus on research. And I want to do research. I want to be a professor. So that really stuck out to me. Um, and also because like Atlanta being like the black queer capital of the country, like I just I really felt like I needed to be here to like develop as a person and like go out there and really see like what my interests were and like find my queerness. Um, so that was like a huge draw for me as well in uh, applying memory. I would like echo those sentiments. Um, I feel like Emory, um, and especially Atlanta in general, is such a vibrant city. And um, I was like, I definitely want to stay here four more years. Um, I saw like a lot of focus on liberal arts and ability to like explore um, different disciplines and like combine them at Emory. Um, and I've definitely been able to do that. So I, I'm like definitely really interested in like um, contemplative sciences, which is like, kind of like um the mind body connection and how like meditation and meditative practices can can help someone um and heal and through emory i'm actually like able to i'm next month i'm studying abroad in india um for the tibetan mind body science program and i feel like um in regards to like queer life at emory um i've been like shown like so much support from the office um danielle knows um like definitely showering me and providing me so many opportunities to thrive here and like um kind of like become the best version of myself and like I I have expressed like a lot of like um like uh <laughs> thank you <Eleanor. laughs> um or oh wait no sorry that's embarrassing um sorry I was thinking like I have definitely been able to like explore my um my passion with queer activism through the office, they've provided me so much, so many opportunities to do that. And I really, really appreciate that. Thank you all. Um, is there something in particular that you enjoy the most about the Emory community or being a part of the Emory community? Is there something that stands out to you? I think what stands out most to me is just how outgoing the student body is. I feel like the size of our campus is at the perfect Goldilocks number where it's not too big where you're going to go out and like see someone, meet them for the first time and then never run into them again. But it's not small enough for you to sort of know everyone on campus. Regardless of where you're going, there's always going to be a familiar face and people are just so welcoming and accepting. I remember when I moved in for the first time, it was just like this herd of first year students who were all getting to know each other in the open lounges of our residence hall. And I think that was the first time that I truly felt like I was accepted for being who I am. Like, again, in Gainesville, Georgia, I didn't really have that big queer community that I could feel like I was connected to. But just coming to Emory and finding other queer people and other people who sort of identified with me was so easy. And people were just so outgoing and constantly looking for new friends. And I think that's what I really enjoy. Um, I think that I would totally second that. I remember within one of the first couple of days that I got on campus, the Office of LGBT Life every fall hosts like a new student mixer. Um, and it was when the the space is now in Cox and our like super night was when the space was still in like the temporary basement of our uh, Alumni Memorial University Center. And it was just absolutely people smushed into the refrigerator there were people spilling out into the hall and well for it had been COVID so I was like what people what um but it was just I'm kind of from like a more rural area in Ohio and I had just like never seen a community like that and everybody was so kind and I remember I was like I like guessed that the person who lived next to me I was like I think she's gay um so we went together and then we were like what what is going on she's also from kind of a rural area um and I just I remember it so well because it was like I had it was nothing like nothing I'd ever seen before and I was like this is this is what it feels like to have a community and I still see people who I met um back in August of 2021 
I also had that same uh, similar experience with the queer student mixer. I remember um, there was one of the girls who like lived on my floor who I kind of thought was queer, but I wasn't sure. So I like saw her at the mixer. I was like, okay, and we're still we're best friends to, to, to till today. Um, so it's been it was really great to like go to that space and like right off the bat feel really comfortable in like being myself and not having to like decide if I wanted to like come out to people or whatever. It was kind of just like. I didn't have to because it was normal and it was like accepted. So that was really great. That was like the first time I've ever experienced anything like that. Yeah. So like just like echoing all the sentiments, I also remember like within my first, I think it was like three days here, I went to that event and it was like, oh my gosh, I like love Emory. <laughs> like I, it was like the whole space was packed and there was like um just so much like vibrancy and like excitement in the room. And I could like tell from that moment that like, I really clicked with like the queer community here and then like I remember last year last spring there was like a like a queer picnic on the quad and it was like sunny outside and like I just like laid on like the the what's the word like the quilt or something with my friend and it's like this is like so college like I didn't know how to like put it in any other way it's like um I really like feel like a sense of home with the both like Emory community and like queer community especially here one story for this last um year the new spaces the brand new spaces in cox hall weren't open yet we had just moved in and for the first day of classes which is when we typically have that first year mixer for mixer um and i convinced them to open it for one afternoon only and so we still had that event because it has been so important to so many students over the years of like really finding their folks really kind of from day one so um, super excited to see that that continues to be impactful for folks and will continue to do it for sure. Um, so that that's one way people have found community, um, like queer community on campus. Are there other ways or other ways that you're involved in that Abby talked a little bit about Emory Pride? So um, if folks wanna share a little bit about all the different ways that they, they find community on campus. Yeah, so I can um I can go off of that. So Emory Pride is like an undergrad um kind of pride um LGBTQ plus focused organization. Um the Office of LGBT Life. Um not that it's like super technical or whatever, it's super awesome, but Emory Pride hosts like a bit more different um events. We have an annual drag show, we have queer mixers, we've done like queer laser tag in the past, um, we have Pride Prom usually every spring. So we host like a lot of um, independent events for undergrad students. And um, this is definitely an area in which you can like connect more with like a general student body, um, I would say, um, if you're looking to meet like other undergrad students who are also involved, you know, with LGBTQ plus life. Um, yeah, I would, I, if you have any questions, you definitely like can feel free to reach out to me by email. And also I'm involved with, um, the Office of Religious Life, um, specifically, like I am the president of um, Emory Buddhist Club, and we do a lot of like meditation events. And I would say I've definitely found um, another sense of community on campus there. Definitely, you know, if you have an interest, a hobby, um, you know, a belief or faith, you can definitely find an organization and call that, you know, a home to you as well. I've attended a lot of the events that Advic just mentioned. The drag show is like one of my favorite things. It was on Halloween this year, which was super fun. Um, the Pride Prom is also really great. I have a friend who was like, went to a very Catholic high school. And in order to like go to prom, you had to bring a girl. Um, so then he was like able to like go to prom with a guy when he got here, which was like a super meaningful experience to him. So I, I think it's really great that we put on all those things. Something I'm involved in on our campus is the Queer Theory Reading Group. It's put on by the Department of Women's Gender and Sexuality Studies, but it's like open to everybody. Um, and it's like not intimidating at all. It's not academic. We've like watched Mean Girls in the past and talked about that. We have watched um, at the Rose Library um, here at Emory has, a, it's the like rare book and manuscript archive. They have a really rich co collection of like LGBT history documents, which is really cool. They also put on a drag show and you can like look at all the stuff, which is really fun. Um, but 
they have all of the American music show, which is actually where RuPaul got his start. And it was all filmed in Atlanta. So we've like watched episodes of that before. And it's just been a really cool way to get exposed to a lot of different like queer texts and queer history um, and also like get access to the Rose Library and stuff like that. Um, thinking about folks mentioned Atlanta and it being a really vibrant city, um, have folks uh, had particular experiences being queer or finding queer community out in Atlanta as well? Um, thinking about also what Em said about um, Atlanta kind of being like this queer black mecca in a way. I saw the other day that Atlanta was chosen for like international black pride at the end of August this year. So I'm trying to figure out a way to get students there to that. Um, but Emory also participates in Atlanta Pride each year to schedule a, a breakfast beforehand, and then we shuttle students to the side of the parade, and then we have a shuttle in the parade, and um, we have a Emory Healthcare, so it's like a pretty big 200 something person uh, contingent going through downtown Atlanta. But if folks have um, experiences maybe with Atlanta Pride or other ways of being in community in the city, I'd love to hear about that. Yeah, I would definitely say um, the Pride, like Emory Pride, uh, well, it's not Emory Pride, but like the Atlanta Pride um, is a really fun way to like meet people. I say Emory Pride because like I always like walk in it with Emory. So like in my head, it's Emory puts it on. Um, but the Atlanta Pride, which is really nice because it's in October. Um, so like we're here for it. It's not in June. Um, so that's really great. That's a really nice way I feel like to connect like right like the first, what is it, second month of college to connect with a lot of queer people outside of your school and like make, like just meet really cool people who are like dressed really coolly and just like get people's numbers and make friends outside of Emory. It's really cool. Yeah. What am I, oh, sorry, Diego, you go ahead. Sorry, it's okay, you can go. Uh, one of my professors in the anthropology department, Dr. Marcella Benitez, is married to Rachel Garbus, who is the editor in chief of Wussy Magazine, which is like a queer culture magazine, and it's based in Atlanta, which is really cool. Um, Rachel is part of the Atlanta LGBT History Project, which is which is a podcast. I've like she's come and given a talk in one of my classes before, and they like interview drag queens and like people who were part of the Atlanta scene in like the eighties and nineties, uh, which is really cool. You should totally listen to the podcast. Um, but Wussy we'll Magazine hosts all these different things. They have a book club. They have a movie club at the Plaza Theater, which is kind of a couple miles away from Emory, where they show different queer films, like fun stuff, like But I'm a Cheerleader, and also more like art housey stuff like funeral parade of roses and you can go which is super fun they also have drag brunches um so all of that is really great it's it's cool to be around and another cool thing about just being in atlanta is that there's so many other schools that are so close to us there's like georgia state university georgia tech morehouse Spelman, and a lot of those schools also have lgbtq centered events so Last semester, I got to go to one at Georgia Tech. They had a queer night. I went with some of my friends from high school. And it was really cool to get to interact with other queer students who, again, like live in Atlanta, but go to a different school and live in a different part of the city. So it's nice being able to have those different connections outside of just our campus and get to sort of grow your queer network, I guess, for lack of a better word. Yeah, I just wanted to echo that. I feel like the queer network is super strong in Atlanta. Um, I always get like DMs from like the tech pride organization and um, other school pride organizations asking for collaborations with Emory Pride. Um, I also feel like um, there's a lot of opportunities to engage with the queer community in Atlanta. I remember I went thrifting like my freshman year um, at Lost and Found Youth and saw that there is like an opportunity to volunteer there. And um, I just reached out to them like, hey, can I set up like volunteer, like a volunteer initiative with y'all through Emory Pride? I mean, through Emory and also Emory Pride. And now we have like weekly trips there to like, you know, help out um, homeless or youth because 100 percent of like pro proceeds from from the store go to supporting them. So you can definitely see um, an impact with helping the queer community in Atlanta, with engaging with it. Um, yeah. Thank you all.
um, thinking about being on campus a little bit, um, are there particular resources you would want to highlight for a prospective student um, that maybe not just career students might be taking advantage of, but resources that you find particularly helpful or have found helpful? Definitely. I would say the um, gender affirming items initiative, I think that's what it's called, um, at the Office of LGBT Life is really great. They give you like, it's got, it sounds like gender affirming items for free, just like fill out a form and they can ship it uh, to an address. Um, well, they ship it to campus and then you can like ask it for it to be delivered to you discreetly or not if you wish. Um, so that's really great. I did it and a couple of my friends also did it. And that was like a really great thing to have like from the university. One of what I felt was one of the most unique resources um, was actually within the residence halls. So every single floor will have a gender neutral bathroom. So regardless of your gender identity, you're going to have a place where you can comfortably go. And I thought that was so cool just to, like know that every single person because it's not really something that a lot of people think of unless you're a non-binary person or gender non-conforming um, but it's something that they definitely struggle with every day but knowing that there's a place within every single floor of the residential buildings is so unique and I think a lot of schools sort of don't necessarily take advantage of it the way Emory does uh, but I, I just thought that was a really unique resource. Um, other resources that um, from an administrative side, kinds of things that I'm working on and behind the scenes sometimes. Um, I have a liaison with our counseling and psychological services um, office. And so students are able to access uh, counselors through that um, office and that we have queer affirming um, and safe space training counselors that are available. Um, we also have counselors who will come to particular events if we think that maybe they'll be needed or to provide support in spaces, which is really great. They were just at our International Trans Day of Visibility brunch um, a couple weeks ago. And so that has been great to kind of have folks in the space that we don't necessarily have to always come to them, but they're going to come to us and be supportive and um, help create community in that way. Um, student health services. We've done a lot of work with our student health services physicians and care providers. And so the Emory University Student Health Insurance Plan covers a lot of gender affirming care, and we've made it easier so that students can access that care uh, through their primary care at Student Health Services. And so you're not having to set up specialist appointments and things like that to get things like such as hormones. Um, so that's really exciting um, for folks who are over the age of 18. Um, yeah, and we're continuing to improve that process. You can learn about more about it. The, how you access those services on our website. And so um, be sure to take a look there for our in infographics. Um, another thing, there's a, a designated name and pronoun policy that, that Emory recently kind of um, implemented. We've had the chosen name policy for a while, but we've added pronouns as well. And so in your profile through Opus or PeopleSoft, you can go in and put the name that you want to be called by. Um, and it does not have to be your legal name. Then your legal name will only show up where it has to legally show up. Otherwise, it's going to show up as the name that you choose. Um, and then your pronouns can be inputted there. And it'll, it'll show up in places like the rosters that your faculty may, um, may print and use for roles. So that was a big accomplishment over the past couple of years. Um, and students really take advantage of not having to have a legal name change is a big deal for folks. Uh, speaking of bathrooms, um, Diego mentioned the bathrooms uh, in all the residence halls. We also have a map on the campus map. So the official campus map, you can go in and select all the restrooms and you're, you'll find them wherever they're located across campus in all the different buildings in addition to the residence hall. So that's a big deal. Um, also in our new student center, which is actually behind Eddie's shoulder over there, we have um, a multi-user all gender restroom. Um, and so we're trying to incorporate more of those kinds of bathrooms across campus. And so rather than just being a single user, single user, there's multi-user uh, bathrooms available. And we're looking forward to Georgia updating the International Plumbing Code so that we can have even more of those in, in different buildings and spaces. And then at maybe Abbott could talk a little bit about this. There's also we have an all gender um, housing policy. So folks, in short, um, 
like the simplest way to explain it is that anybody can live with anybody else as long as all parties agree, regardless of their gender or sex markers. And so um, that's an exciting option for folks to know that they have available to them. And we're always working through if something were to come up and people are concerned about roommates, we're always able to work through that with our, our colleagues over in housing and residence. Yeah, for sure. I just want to like quickly like but and say like um the as for housing um from every everyone I've heard from it's been completely like positive. It's just been like the matter for of a quick email being like hey um this is like I just want want these accommodations and um it's it's just like that like that's that's pretty much what I've what I've heard. I thought of another resource while you were talking. That was super cool. Um, through our Office of Health, Health Promotion, you can do a sexpert course, um, which like if you didn't get queer or gender inclusive sex ed or like even like good sex ed when you were in high school, you can do the sexpert class. It's really fun. Um, they give you a mug and a t-shirt and like a certificate when you finish it. Um, but it's like very inclusive. Um, and I learned a lot of stuff that I was like never taught in in high school so it was really cool to do that it's like an online course um and you get to meet a bunch of people and all my friends have matching sexpert mugs now uh, yeah we have great partners over in uh, the office of health promotion we did a um sex jeopardy um event a few weeks ago and it was one of our most popular events we had some very competitive students competing for great prizes um in the office of lgbt life space so uh that was a great and educational time um any other resources that are coming to mind um we do have leadership funding that's available to the office of lgbt life so if you are wanting to go to a conference that's something that's about something queer if you're trying to do research if you're trying to present that research research um those kinds of things uh there's a there are a couple different funds that you you can use to apply for funds and um, it's on a rolling application basis and so um, it's usually up to a couple thousand dollars. We also send students to conferences each year, minus the COVID years, um, and so that's a great resource to have. In addition to, um, we also have a scholarship that we give out each year to a rising second, third, or fourth year student, um, which is a it kind of acknowledges either someone's great leadership or their capacity for a uh, being a future leader. And so we just gave out that award at our most recent Pride Awards, which were on March 27th. And so we gave out a number of different awards, plus the scholarship. And then we also gave rainbow cords to all our graduating students and allowing their diploma. So celebrating all their accomplishments as they go off um, to their next, next adventure. I also thought of another resource. Um, I mentioned this earlier, but um, this is like truly invaluable. I feel from from so many students I've heard are the queer community groups, um, and the queer and Asian community group. Um, there's like so many people that have like become like close, like like closest to friends, like have found a housing with each other, and like come to that come to that space as like a. a uh space of like solace and support each week of just like comfort and it's not just like always like this it used to be called like queer discussion groups but um I'm glad they changed the name to queer community groups because it really is a community more than just like sitting down and discussing things it's like it's like we do like a lot of stuff together um and it's it's like really a place of support yeah yeah we have they fluctuate right now we're up to 11 different queer community groups and so they range they have um obviously yeah, Vic has talked about um queer asian we have blackout queer trans latinx a bi pan group a polyamorous group we've started a queer neurodivergent group um a sapphic circle queer men an asexual a romantic group and there's always a couple that I forget. Um, but yeah, we're up to 11. They're peer facilitated, peer led. So it's also a great opportunity for students who are wanting to um, add to the resume as a, a facilitator or a leader of group, creating community. It's another great way to get involved with the, with the Office of LGBT Life. Um, 
my last questions for you all. Um, we talked about all the things that are wonderful, all the things that have gone great for you all. Are there any challenges that you see at Emory that students should know about prior to committing and coming here? Anything you maybe wish you had known or you would want students to know? I'm sorry, would you mind saying the question again? I didn't actually hear you. Yeah, sure. Um, are there any challenges that you see at Emory or know about at Emory that you think students should know about prior to committing or in maybe in the same vein? Is there something that maybe you wish you had known before coming to Emory that you think that other students should know about? The only thing I think of probably is that like as accepting as individual people might be there would be other people who aren't and I feel like that's sometimes hard to navigate especially when you like come in and everyone's like really nice and really accepting when you meet that first person who isn't it kind of like hits you like a ton of bricks because like even if like you're used to it from whatever environment you come from when you're placed in a different environment that's really accepting having that will be really like jarring but that's not really specific to Emory it's just one of those things that's like even though we've talked it up just know that it's not perfect because like we can't control individual people's actions, even though that's unfortunate, and I wish I could. Um, but yeah. I would agree with that. I mean, you can go to that queer mixer and you're like, oh, this is this is gay utopia. This is amazing. Um, but you know, Emory doesn't exist in a, in a vacuum and it's it is like a, a real place with real people. Um, and I would just uh, that there are a lot of resources that you can go to like conflict resolution I know like I when I had problems my first year here I talked to my RA who was really supportive about it and was really nice um, so there definitely are there are resources uh, Danielle mentioned CAPS um, counseling and psychological services you can find therapy through their free therapy which is really exciting um, so there are definitely our resources that can help you navigate that um, because you know that that's reality. Are there any questions or any um, last things that maybe I didn't ask about that folks would like to add? And or anybody from our audience who has a question that they would like answered. Don't think I see anything in the Q and A. Uh, feel free to drop anything in. Last last chances. Um, but in the event that there are no questions, we are good to close out here. Um, I want to say thank you. Round of applause to our awesome panelists and Danielle. Thank you all so much. This has been great. It's not only just so informative, but as a queer alum, it's awesome to see that students are still thriving. Y'all are all doing such unique things, but also find a community in your spaces. And it's so uplifting to see. And it's just, it's really heartwarming. So thank you all so much for sharing your perspectives here today. I'm sure the students that were able to come here, I hope that they've been able to take away just new knowledge and just some of the great things that make Emory so holistically awesome. Um, it truly is a place that community thrives. And I hope that that was a message that was shared today. So yeah, it looks like no questions are in. So again, thank you all so much. This recording will be on the Emory University YouTube page in no later than 72 hours. Um, and feel free to reach out to Danielle, the panelists, um, or myself. I'm going to drop my email in the chat. Um, and I'm going to be also Eddie, Eddie Cabrera Jr. Um, on the Emory Admissions page if you need anything. Um, so yeah, thank y'all so much and um, have a great one. Thank you.